As I mentioned, we just returned from the Oval Office, and so it is my honor, on behalf of the President of the United States, to announce that henceforth, the men and women of the United States Space Force will be known as Guardians. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, just a, a great group of other executives are here from the top companies. And it's patriots like you that are the reason why America was first in flight, first to the moon, and why America will always be first in space. You know, before I got here, it wasn't looking so good. Before we came in, I will tell you, they didn't have such big plans for space. Now they have plans, and it's great, not only in terms of jobs and everything else, it's great for the psyche of our country. Uh, this morning it came out that small business is the most optimistic it's ever been in the history of our country. That's pretty good. Now, I don't know if they go back to 1776. I don't know if they go back to, you know, areas of a little bit earlier, slightly, like by 100 years or 200 years, but I will tell you, I have never seen optimism like we have right now. So it's a very exciting time. I want to uh, also say that when it comes to space, too often, for too many years, our dreams of exploration and discovery were really squandered by politics and bureaucracy, and we knocked that out. So important for our psyche, what you're doing. It's going to be important monetarily and militarily but so important for right up here, the psyche. We don't want China and Russia and other countries leading us. We've always led. We've gone way far afield for decades now, having to do with our subject today. We're going to be the leader by far. We're behind you a thousand percent. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know I come back with that video just to make you think. We heard Mike Pence call the members of Space Force the Guardians. Also, we heard Trump say that we were the first on the moon. Guys, we know we haven't been to the moon. We know this for a fact. We've been to the Hollywood studios, but not the moon. Now, basically, going over the actual Space Force, guys, we know that we are launching satellites like crazy. Because basically what they want to do is do what? Put 5G up in space. Why is this so important? Because the fact is that we know digital currencies are the future. And for those who don't have access to the internet, this works perfect. And how do you drain more money from the American people to make this happen? By creating another branch of the military. Remember the House passed a bill for $738 billion, not the Senate. It was the House that did that, guys. So the fact is, when it comes to the New World Order, remember, the bird needs both wings to fly. So anytime there's a New World Order agenda, for some reason, they come together. And guys, don't forget, when it comes to asteroids, don't forget the same time the C word was going on, there was an asteroid that hit Occur, Africa. Now, they said it wasn't. They said it was a truck with explosive. All the people around there said, no, that was an asteroid. Now, don't forget, NASA had already stated in March that they were tracking an asteroid, but then said it didn't hit. But guys, we clearly know it did. If you can go look it up online and you see the crater that was left. So guys, you know, they're not going to tell us the truth of everything that's going on. We know right now we are definitely in biblical times. But guys, don't forget when it comes to the New World Order, everything is planned out. I'm going to leave you with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Even though he is a puppet, he definitely tells some truth sometimes. Enjoy the rest of the video. I've thought a lot about it, but I don't have a strong opinion. The idea of a space force is not a fundamentally odd when you consider that the army uh, 70 years ago uh, birthed the Air Force. Uh, there was the Army Air Force and once we realized that technology and warfighting capabilities evolve, uh, 
and was going to take place up in the uh, in the, in the, the airspace rather than the ground space, then it was sensible to suggest that perhaps this should be an entire branch of the military unto itself. So today, uh, all space capabilities of the military are handled by the Air Force. That was the natural extension of what the Air Force people did. And it's huge. Uh, Air Force controls the GPS. Right, most which, people don't realize. And I know someone has a yeah. show called GPS. <laughs> but <laughs> but mo most people don't realize that GPS, which is really now basically the underpinnings of the digital economy. I mean, everything yes. we do yes. in terms of location. Billions of right. dollars of commerce. Is, 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 is funded on the, on the back of, the, of an infrastructure sustained run by the U.S. Air Force. By the U.S. Air Force, that's correct. And there's an entire place where that happens in Colorado. The point is that not a, a weird idea to say we perhaps should have a Space Force. The question is, does the Air Force think that they can't handle it under the current uh, administrative uh, bureaucratic structures? And if not, then maybe it's a good idea. But if the generals say, we got this, then I don't see the need to force it on them. What I also have noticed in the last few months is that the Chinese and the Russians have gotten more active in very interesting ways. So the Chinese went up and destroyed one of their old satellites. Mm -hmm. And the Russians went up and um, essentially uh, deactivated one. And I thought that they were in some sense signaling, you know, we have the capacity to go up into space and to screw around with stuff or to destroy it entirely. The fact that they could do it to theirs means they could just as easily do it to America's uh, purposes. Do you think it's inevitable that space becomes an arena for conflict? The, the UN Space Treaty that promises peaceful uses of outer space. By the way, there's more than just no nukes in space. It's, it's if, there's another, if there's an astronaut in need from another country, then you're obligated to assist them. It's, it's, it's a very nicely worded document. But I've always, there's a part of me that always says, why do we promise we'll treat each other nicely in space? If that's successful, why don't we have a peaceful use of Earth treaty? <laughs> 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 if, if it works there, it seems to me it right, should work right, on Earth. Right, right. And if we can't get it to work on Earth, right. why should I have any confidence at all that somehow, oh, now we're in space, now we'll all be right, friends. Right, right. But why would the arena make a difference? It's the political uh, tensions that oh, cause the rivalry. And I know I sound cynical saying that, but I, human nature scares the hell out of me. It is small and fragile. By the way, I, I serve on a board of the Pentagon, the Defense Innovation Board, but I'm not speaking for that board, nor obviously for the Pentagon. By the way, there are future needs and concerns of what a space force would have to think about, such as asteroid defense. All right, that's a complete space-based threat to the livelihood not only of a nation but of the world. And it may be that the cooperation of the world in space is to save civilization. Uh, and that could be the greatest force of peace there ever was.